the urine analysis specimen. So you need not have a hi-fi equipment to do this simple. So one is you need a specimen and then you need certain very basic tools to arrive at a proper diagnosis. And uh, as you also know, the, my pathologist professor used to say, you can call urine as liquid biopsy. It means that it is directly reflecting the pathological problems. The pro problems in the kidney can be directly reflected in the urine specimen. And it is one of the simplest methods. As you all know, the specimen, the ideal specimen is early morning midstream sample of urine. So the uh, highly concentrated, so it reflects properly the function of the kidney overnight. So the patient who will pass urine at least four hours later. So uh, if the patient has passed urine in the midnight, say uh, 12 o'clock, so ideal thing is at six o'clock or four o'clock. So it is early morning midstream sample of urine so that there won't be any external genitalial uh, contamination of the urine sample and also it should be a clean catch. So the container should be sterile and then the container should not touch the external genitalia of the patient and the patient voids some amount of urine like say 10 to 15 ml and then the rest of the midstream sample of urine will be collected in a sterile container and it should be a clean catch. Suppose in case of children it might be slightly difficult to get a sample. So what we can do is we can gently stroke on the lower abdominal wall or sterile collection bags are there available so we can use them and then the urine sample should be free from the debris. Please remember that many false positive or false negative uh, uh, lab laboratory values we can get if it is if there is any slightest external genitalia contamination okay and the container should be sterile and you have to transport to the lab very fast at least within two hours it has to be analyzed for some mcq they have asked in some state entrance examination uh, previously in four years ago so when should uh, what is the earliest thing you have to assess so that's to get good results means it should be analyzed at least within two hours you cannot uh, progress it beyond the to us. So one thing is what are the components we are going to see? One is the gross appearance. How is the gross appearance of the urine sample? So they say it should reflect what you drink. Okay, If you drink plenty of adequate water, it should be almost like the color of the water or at least slightly amber colored. Suppose if it is too much yellow, you know it is hemoconcentration. So there is uh, dehydration. And then if it is frank blood or is it is it having any cloudy appearance or is it having a, uh, any suspension, any suspensory particles or is it grossly contaminated with some, sometimes even you might find the calculi also in the urine sample. Okay. In case of uh, any calculi, you are waiting for some calculus to be passed out, you can collect the urine on a sterile gauze. So a sterile gauze can be placed almost near the external genitalia so that the calculus will come and fall in the, uh, the sterile gauze. Okay, you can take that. Okay, what you have to do with this one is uh, it is it should be clear and mild amber colored. So look for any cloudy appearance or frank pus or blood or any any other color. So it depends on the pigments or the depending on the food they have consumed. So the color might even reflect in the urine. You should also look for the odor. Okay, ideally the urea odor is acceptable but not in the fresh sample. So there could be some strong chemical odor. Okay, and you have to send them also for chemical analysis like sugar, albumin, urobilinogen, ketone body, specific gravity, nitride, bilirubin, depending on the condition which you are suspecting. Okay. There are certain uh, easy methods nowadays which can detect the uh, any for the presence of any chemical substances. There are dipsticks. Okay, you can use them for protein analysis of the protein glucose. So ideally, the renal threshold, the 180 milligram per deciliter, when it crosses it, so the sugar will spill out in the urine. Okay, just one moment. Okay, one minute. Uh, I thought I got uh, some doubt or query, something. Okay, so the RBCs 
if they are abnormally present like more than 3 per high power field or wbc is more than 5 per high power field and any bacteria more than 10 so all these are all significant values please try to remember them okay and you can sometimes see the fungi or parasites sir has already told in the evening class regarding the cas can anyone tell me how what is the difference between a cast and the cell which is uh, sent in the which is passed in the urine what does a cast signify anyone uh, damage in the uh, nephrons or in the any of the filtrating structure okay excellent so these are not the cells so there are certain cells which are combining with certain uh, proteinaceous material in certain part of the nephron and they are being excreted in the form of cast. So they are not just simply the cells. So they are getting attached to some other proteinaceous material and then they are passing in the urine. So what is the level of pathology? So where do you think the pathology could be? There are different parts of the nephron, you know. So at which part pro approximately you can guess the pathology? Just guess. This is a surgery class. So definitely uh, you are not thinking in terms of glomerulus. So it is extra glomerular. So it is beyond the glomerular level, usually in the collecting tubules. So if you see... So there are different casts which you can find at different levels. So usually it is in the collecting tubule level. So it is at these levels you can find the different casts. So this is loop of Henle, okay, thin loop. Okay, you, you here usually you see hyaline cast. So this is the collecting duct where you can see the broadcast. Okay, and then in the uh, ascending loop, you can see the distal ascending loop. You can see the epithelial cast. And then in the most distal one, you can see the white blood cell and beyond which you can see the red blood cell cast. So depending on the cast, you can even get an idea about where exactly in the nephron the problem is. So these are the cellular materials along with the proteinaceous materials in the collecting system of urine which are being excreted. So you can get certain ideas. So the RBC casts are seen in glomerular disease, WBC casts in pyuria or even in the glomerular diseases and then epithelial or protein casts and if they form in distal convertible in the presence of protein denaturation. So you can think that there is certain amount of damage to the tubules and also the cellular interaction with these proteinaceous material and there is denaturation, okay? So these are the different casts. So this is one is A is the hyaline casts, and then uh, you can see the uh, different types of casts and different staining methods. I'm not going into much details because that will be covered by the uh, medicine people. Okay. Now coming to the crystals, there are certain materials called as uh, crystals which are excreted in the urine in presence of certain pathological conditions. Usually they determine that. Uh, there is some calculus. So depending on the morphology of these crystals, you can even guess which type of calculus is there in the, uh, in the, in the renal system. Okay, One is calcium oxalate. So these are the most common type of renal calculi. They are usually bipyramidal in shape. I'll be showing the diagrams. And the calcium oxalate monohydrate. So they are hourglass shaped, triple phosphate as coffin lid shaped, I'll show you. So these are the struite stones. So these are the triple phosphate stones, okay? So is this resembling the coffin lid? So it is not the uh, plain coffin lid which you see in the regular basis. So if you see any uh, royal uh, uh, that cremation, you can see the coffin lid appearance, okay? So this uh, shape of the cast is resembling the coffin lid. So these are typical of triple phosphate or also called as struvite stones. Uric acid calculi, they usually form in the rosette. So like the petals of the flower, the rosette appearance. Okay. Are these resembling, resembling the petals of a flower? So these are the uric acid calculi. Yes, are you with me, doctors? 
is there any confusion or anything no ma'am i am just in the introductory part okay and the monohydrate alkali what does this shape uh, what what can you guess from this shape are they they are appearing like dumbbell shaped or even hour glass appearance okay the sand glass which you see in the movies okay so these are dumbbell shaped cars which are usually made up of oxalate monohydrate so monohydrate oxalate alkali are the hardest stones okay just remember once we deal with the alkali renal alkali we can uh, go in detail but just remember for the sake so these are hour glass appearance and when there are dihydrate stones they are usually have bipyramidal these are also called as envelope shaped alkali are they appearing like our envelope okay you can see the envelope you can just imagine the envelope okay so these are envelope shaped uh, the crystals which are seen in oxalate that to dihydrate okay these are slightly softer alkali compared to the monohydrate alkali okay so these are the diagrams which were asked in image based questions neat pg okay so these are the coffin lid shaped triple phosphate alkali okay these are the rosette uric acid alkali mo calcium oxalate monohydrate or dumbbell shaped or hour glass alkali and then the crystals which are envelope shaped are dihydrate okay now coming to the renal function test so renal function test you are very well aware uh, what are the what are the different tests we do okay the most sensitive being serum creatinine so this should be uh, normal any deviation any slightest deviation definitely it will reflect the impaired renal function so why is it more sensitive than the blood urea i am asking very basic questions the answer is here only why is it more sensitive yes anyone are you there oh, yeah yes it changes easily and shows variable figures yes because it is highly variable if you are in dehydration if you don't drink water if you take high protein diet if you exercise more if your diet changes rapidly so everything so it is it changes very rapidly and it is not that much reliable so we use the most sensitive investigation that is serum creatinine and then also there are many other investigations like creatinine clearance okay so which are more specific compared to the urea so you know the famous you remember the famous uh, formula that is uv by p okay so u stands for urinary creatinine p for plasma creatinine and then v is volume of urine per minute okay so here to calculate this okay the creatinine clearance you should have 24 hour urine sample collection so it has to be collected in a sterile usually glass jar because the urine should not undergo any chemical denaturation so if you see the olden days wards so in, in nephro ward or urological ward the patient will be having a huge glass jars they are very thick walled uh, glass jars with a rubber cork okay uh, over the top of the lid okay so the 24 hour sample urine is collected and with this formula you are going to calculate the creatinine clearance that also reflects the renal function over a period of 24 hours okay then coming to the investigations proper plain x ray kub simplest of the investigations which can be done even at the phc level but there are certain prerequisites to take plain x ray kub kub means kidney urine uh, ureter and the bladder okay for this x ray okay there should be bowel preparation so there should not be unnecessary gaseous distension so the previous night the patient should take mild laxative so that there is minimal gas in the bowel okay so bowel preparation is must and then the x ray type of nature of the ray is high penetrant x rays should be used for this and what should it cover one is below symphysis pubis and the lower two ribs so this is the extent so the 11th and 12th ribs and then up to symphysis pubis the x ray has to be taken so what are the points we are going to see and then what are the different things we are going to see in the 
plain X-ray KUV. So this is reasonably a well-prepared bowel. Okay, we are seeing very minimal uh, ga gaseous shadows, or else the entire. If you take a normal X-ray abdomen, you can definitely see large amount of gas. You won't be able to see any shadows. properly so with this we can approximately arrive at an idea what are the outlines the most common thing you will be observing is the psoas shadow the psoas muscle shadow okay and on the lateral border border you can guess the position of the right kidney and then the left kidney here and so this is the splenic zone okay this is the psoas muscle so lateral to this there will be descending colon the small bowel rectum and anal canal so these are the approximate borders you have to see so in these lines so along these lines you have to see what are you looking for in case of a plain x ray kb one is any radio opaque materials like calculi okay you can even see the stents okay these stents which were kept before the any surgical procedure the patient has undergone any procedure the patient might be harboring the stents or the patient might be having calculi and then that you can even see the enlarged kidney psoas abscess retroperitoneal tumors so all this can be appreciated with a reasonably good knowledge on radiology so there is a line called ureteric line along the path of ureter and then urinary bladder can be if there are any calculi you can look into the urinary bladder area and can pick up certain radio opaque shadows okay now in this x ray what are you able to appreciate so uh, since we are dealing with urology it is very easy for you to say yes this is x ray kub showing like that what are you able to, can, can you see the outline of the kidney here i can make out this is the outline of the kidney i think the right kidney you are beautifully able to make out can you yes ma'am okay left kidney will it be higher than the right or uh, lower than the right uh, higher higher the... okay okay so you can expect the left kidney border slightly higher up okay in this zone usually so if you see the right kidney zone so this is the renal pelvis so you are seeing multiple radio opaque shadows okay the largest one is in the renal pelvis okay there are certain many multiple cal there are multiple radio opaque shadows so probably these are the multiple renal calculi the largest one being in the renal pelvis see is it, it is it is such a simple investigation hardly some 100 to 150 rupees so this is one of the simplest invas investigations you can do it so what you can see on the left side so is it the renal calculus or somewhere else ureter ah, ureter it is in the ureteric line so the left kidney is probably here so along the lateral border so this is the ureteric line it will pass in front of the this uh, sacroiliac so along the crest and then it joins the bladder so this is almost a mid ureteric calculus on the left side and it is quite large only so this is a case of bilateral calculi the right side being renal and then the left side ureteric calculi so what can you make out so who are my target audience here are you medical students or are you pg going people um, final year medical okay yes you will be asked in the exam describe the read the x ray so this is a x ray pelvis ap view showing a large radio opaque material just above the symphysis pubis probably indicating a bladder calculus so this is how you have to describe the x ray so it is not just telling the diagnosis and leaving the examiner will not accept okay uh, so he might ask even the differential diagnosis also so this is x ray pelvis showing a large radio opaque material in the region of the urinary bladder so it is probably a bladder calculus 
okay so from x ray kub we can make out certain radio opaque shadows those could be either any calcified spot usually the uh, oxalate stones which are usually the radio opaque stones we will see uh, we'll get to see what are the different radio opaque calculi what are the radio lucent calculi and then any calcification in the urinary tract can be detected by simple x ray kub so it ha the, there should be some bowel preparation overnight and then high penetration rays have to be uh, used in order to get a proper x ray so you look the kidneys the psoas shadow the ureteric line the region of the urinary bladder and pick up certain radio opaque shadows okay there is another investigation called as very important investigation but it is slowly becoming obsolete nowadays it is called intravenous urogram previously it was called as ivp that is intravenous pilogram why it is not why the term the ivp is not preferred is pilogram means it shows only the uh, renal pelvis or ureter no it is not like that it even can show the parenchymal diseases in the uh, kidney the image which you get even you can make out the parenchymal changes not just the collecting system but also the renal parenchymal damage can be uh, assessed by this specific investigation called intravenous urogram which was previously called as ivp for this the, there are certain prerequisites one is there should be normal renal function in the evening class you have uh, already uh, know about the uh, pilogram the contrast induced nephritis or nephropathy and then even it can precipitate the renal failure in vulnerable individuals so if the patient is already having certain renal compromise or ccf where, where the pressures are not proper you can suddenly precipitate the renal failure so you should be very careful the renal function should be normal and definitely there should be bowel preparation okay first what we do is first we take plain x ray kub okay we take a borderline the scout x ray that is called plain x ray kub is taken and then the 1 ml of test dose will be given so the dye usually is sodium di trizoid or megalumin iothalmate okay so this 1 ml is given and we will wait for 5 to 10 minutes okay so after this test dose there are no reactions from the patient side and you have to you should have in hand the all the crash cart must be available so you should be actively able to deal with the anaphylaxis please don't do it lightly your entire crash cart should be ready with the resuscitation of the patient in case of any unexpected uh, uh, problems okay so your crash uh, crash cart should be ready and then the rest of the dosage so 1 ml per kg it can be given so slow intravenous it is given and then the x rays are taken in 1 minute 5 minutes 15 half an hour and then the last one that is Two hours. So the most useful, okay, and the, which will give almost the entire picture is this most important, the thirty minutes picture. So in this thirty minutes picture, you can visualize the entirely beautifully the entire the urinary system starting from the uh, all the calluses, everything, the pelvic calicial system, the ureter, the bladder, everything. You can beautifully visualize in this thirty minutes picture, okay. now interpretation so what can you interpret i'm just giving you the outline of what the topics we are going to deal in future so how is it is it the regular filling is there any smooth appearance of the outlines or are there any filling defects are there any anatomical variations of the kub like duplication of ureter or non formation agenesis of the kidney is there any hydronephrosis is there any renal calculus like in the form of filling defects okay and then what are the complications you can expect is one is the most dreaded is contrast allergy it can even precipitate and we have even seen the cases causing deaths also okay the contrast allergy is the most dreaded complication but here you are using ionizing radiation so definitely it can't be used in pregnant women and there can be sudden precipitation of renal failure we'll see certain ivu pictures okay what can you see in this just uh, look at it like a lay person and tell me your famous i joke is also there tortious ureter 
that is there okay definitely but is there something so the i am giving you the clue the iphone joke how do you buy an iphone uh, an average indian buys i'm sorry to say this in an online class so there is a genesis of the right kidney are you able to see any shadows in the right side no are you able to see i am not able to see no okay so this is right a genesis of the right kidney with compensatory hypertrophy and also certain dilatation and tortuosity on the left side okay you can even make out this on simple iv can you make out anything yeah definitely the diagnosis is up ma'am excuse me ma'am can you yeah. repeat the interpretation uh, in the iv urogram like uh, it was breaking a while it breaking okay interpretation okay so how is the filling is it regular and smooth filling in the form of a pipe or is it any irregular filling irregular filling usually denotes that there could be any mucosal problem or there is any extrinsic compression okay so there could be any extrinsic compression uh, from the retroperitoneal structures over the ureters or even the pelvic alveolar system or if there is any filling defect so probably it can indicate that it is probably a calculus okay we have to look for the contour of filling smooth appearance of the outlines and then anatomical variations in the kidney a ureter and urinary bladder hydronephrosis you can make out and then renal calculi you can make out with the help of certain filling defects okay you can make out many things from this simple ivu so here there is agenesis and then here you can see the horseshoe kidney okay can you make out the yes, poles yes. are fused okay so such a simple investigation so and you are you are also able to see the ureteric outline very slightly so they are medially displaced here in this case okay so this is typical horseshoe kidney then but the kidney is only not seen now only the connection is uh, actually you you need certain magnification here over here okay uh, but i can make out uh, like this is almost like a appearing like a horseshoe you you remember the horseshoe magnet you remember how it resembles so if yes, you take the outlines in this x ray they are fused at the front front poles okay and then these appear like a horseshoe so can you make out this so this is the so these are the outlines okay so here so it, it is the direction like this it is going so this is horseshoe kidney ideally these should be separate but here they are fused in front of the vertebral body so this is horseshoe kidney is it clear you should see multiple uh, x rays to make out properly okay uh, radiology is not a one x ray thing which you can learn you can get a basic idea okay yes ma'am now the diagnosis is probably i think it's difficult without proper introduction what i wanted you to appreciate is in this one you can see the kidney outline the right kidney and then the left kidney you are able to see the pelvic alveolar system okay the fine the yes, filling is smooth uh, can you make out is there any smooth filling or there any a uh, black opacity that is filling defects no i don't see any filling defects here okay they are nicely going in the ureteric line but what is happening here is so this is the uh, vesico ureteral junction so this is the vesico ureteral junction so it is at this level so there is dilatation so there is dilatation bulb like dilatation can you guess the condition i am i i don't expect the diagnosis from you people but can you just guess so uh, you all know there is some portion called intramural portion of the ureter that means the certain length of ureter is going to travel through the bladder wall so whenever there is abnormal dilatation beyond slightly beyond the of the ureter beyond the bladder wall it will bulge inside the bladder this condition is called ureterocele okay we'll uh, learn in detail what is ureterocele so the intramural portion the distal intramural portion is abnormally getting dilated 
and it is bulging inside the bladder wall so this is called urethrocele and in this condition it is bilateral so what so is the causative factor of urethrocele in this uh, uh, ivu can you may uh, do you see any bulge here so it is uh, see it is dilated pelvic calicial system but it is the almost the end point of the uh, this is the vuj so there is no proper dilatation okay so it is beyond the bladder wall so this is called bilateral urethrocele can you see the bulb like bulging so okay can you see this so this is called urethrocele see we will be learning in detail in urology okay in further each and every condition we are going to learn i am just giving you the idea what you are supposed to see in an intravenous urogram yes someone is having some problem no ma'am i just asked like what causes urethrocele yeah definitely we will learn step by step okay i'm just uh, my uh, opinion i mean my intention of this class is what to look for and how to look for i'm just giving you a basic introductory class for the investigatory modalities so you have to visualize the pelvic calicial system outline of the kidney and then the puj okay and the ureter its smooth filling has to be noted and its proper line has to be followed okay and then the intramural portion and look for smooth entry of the ureters into the urinary bladder and then the 30 minutes film will show you even the urinary bladder contour also so probably this could be 15 minutes picture which is the bladder is not yet filled okay but here there is certain dilatation bulb like dilatation in the distal most ureter so probably this probably this is urethrocele which we will confirm by further history and other investigations okay so what could this be just guess so compare from with the left and right side is left normal just look at this diagram there is right side any obstruction or something ah yes so uh, first tell me compare uh, which one is normal you, it's your you have to determine which is normal according to me the left is normal okay there is a kidney and this is the puj and then the ureter is going and entering the bladder but here something is happening so the ureter is where is it going it is going behind the, the vena cava when it is going behind the vena cava what is it called retro caval ureter okay so this is called retro caval ureter so ideally the ureter should pass in front of the aorta and the inferior vena cava but in this case it is going behind the inferior vena cava so this condition is called retro caval ureter c a v a l okay so here we get the typical deformity called crooked uh, shepherd hook or yes shaped deformity can you make out this yes okay the yes shaped deformity so it is hugging going behind the vena cava and then it is coming again in front so they, it causes hydronephrosis okay so this is retro caval ureter the procedure is you transect you uh, do transection here and you bring in front of the vena cava and then you suture the ureteric ends okay it is done even laparoscopically so it is behind the vena cava it curls behind so it is also called as shepherd hook or fish hook deformity okay you would have seen how the fish hook looks like okay uh, so the shepherd hook or crooked shepherd hook or even the sickle deformity so with this ivu there is a problem that is contrast nephritis contrast induced anaphylaxis the uh, another limitation is the renal function has to be normal and we cannot use in use in pregnant women and also in any doubt of renal compromise so caution has to be executed the uses of intravenous urogram are you can make out even the parenchymal as well as the collecting system abnormalities the level of obstruction or extent of obstruction 
okay whether the calculus is completely blocking or is there any lumen still patent where exactly is it at the mid ureteric level upper ureteric level puj junction level or inside the bladder or outside the bladder so everything you can make out from the intravenous urogram but with the advent of ct scan the use of ivu has slightly declined it is not the most preferred method in case of diagnosing the urological conditions nowadays but still it is used and it is very helpful investigation okay next we will proceed to another investigation that is mcu that is micturating cystourethrography so from the name you can guess like it is the cysto cysto means urinary bladder okay and then urethrography urethra you are going to visualize the urethra but when when the patient is micturating so it is a dynamic investigation okay where do you use this investigation it is the investigation of choice in suspected posterior urethral valves or even in vesico urethral reflux ent madam idu what is it what exactly do you mean so what we do in this micturating cysto urethrogram usually done in children okay you pass a catheter per urethra and you are going slightly beyond okay you are going slightly beyond and injecting the radio opaque dye inside the urinary bladder and then you are uh, you then you will remove it okay and then you ask the patient to micturate when the patient micturates you you are going to take the x ray pictures so what can you make out so if there are any posterior urethral valves so that is a condition usually seen in children okay so in this condition in the neonates usually it manifests between 4 to 8 weeks okay after birth what happens is there are valves in the posterior urethra that means the proximal urethra there are certain valves which will prevent the flow of urine from bladder into the urethra so ideally the urine should pass from urinary bladder into the urethra and then outside but these valves will prevent the flow of urine from urinary bladder to into the urethra so this can be diagnosed with this investigation since they are valves they allow our dye from urethra to bladder but because of the presence of valvular mechanism the urine will not flow from bladder to the outside so you need some procedure a dynamic procedure where the patient is trying to micturate and you are going to catch the uh, exactly the x ray picture so as to diagnose any distal ureter urinary bladder or urethral problems okay catheter is passed into the urinary bladder and the dilute iodine dye is passed and then x ray is taken while applying pressure over the hypogastrium because they are children they will not uh, obey your command okay now you can make out the grading of the reflux this is very famous grading okay many mcqs are asked one is ureters are seen ideally should you see ureters no once the urine has entered the urinary bladder you should never go back into the ureters so in this condition because of the vesico ureteric reflux the ureters are visible and then number 2 ureters and pelvis even the renal pelvis is seen ureters pelvis even the calices are seen and all the above are seen with distended calices uh, and then tortuous elongated serpentine ureters i'll be showing the picture so in this so this is the micturating cysto urethrogram so there is very severe reflux so you can what can you see here i think i can see entire the urinary tract entire urinary tract what can you see doctors can you see the urinary bladder yes. is it the dilated ureter or normal ureter definitely it looks dilated look at the size of the so it is definitely a baby it's definitely not an adult okay just you have to see the surroundings also so severely dilated ureters even the renal pelvis is seen the calices are seen and they are definitely abnormally dilated okay so this shows it is bilateral vesico that means bladder ureteric reflux 
bilateral vu reflux so ideally urine flow should be unidirectional but here it is going in the backward fashion because of the vu reflux which is graded from 1 to 5 in the exam the options were like uh, in a, suppose this uh, was given okay uh, so this was given this picture was given and what is the grade so definitely it is not serpentine if it is serpentine no it looks like a snake okay? okay uh, so different so many s will be there so probably this is grade 4 vu reflux okay which we have just seen okay all above with distended calyces whereas in the fifth one the tortuous elongated and serpentine ureter so it's not looking serpentine so probably it is grade 4 and why it is not grade 6 because grade 6 does not exist that grade 6 is also given in option so vu reflux you should also remember that there is no grade 6 so this is the posterior urethral valves okay so it is the proximal urethra so through this you are directly putting the dye here and then you are going to remove your syringe you are going to apply pressure over the hypogastrum in the child the child will start micturating so what happens is because of the presence of the valves here the valve should not be there urine should freely flow from bladder to the ureter because of the presence of the valves the bladder is distended and the urine is not so properly flowing distally so this is the posterior urethral valves okay just try to remember once we go to that condition uh, we can remember there is another investigation called as ascending urethrogram how is it different from uh, micturating cystourethrogram can anyone guess so the name everything so this is also dye is passed but there in the micturating cystourethrogram we are going to pass the dye directly into the bladder but here we are going to inject the dye from the meatus that's it because we have to visualize the urethra so what is the name suggesting urethrogram that means we are going to visualize the urethra and it is ascending ascending means from below to upwards it means that we are going to pass the dye from the urinary meatus that is the urethral meatus and then the dye is passed above in order to visualize the urethra okay the investigation of choice for stricture urethra so what what is where is the stricture and what is the extent of stricture and then any other abnormalities you can make out from this ascending urethrogram so the red rubber catheter it's a soft catheter it's slightly beyond the meatus okay because the dye has to go up and then the x ray serial x rays are taken any strictures can be diagnosed by this and it is also called as retrograde urethrogram okay retrograde urethrogram that is a old name but the recent name that is the uh, proper term is ascending urethrogram but even in many of the government hospitals we call it as rgu rgu okay you will be hearing this term so slightly passed beyond the meatus that is injected okay so this is the entire length of the urethra and there is the bladder is filling so this is normal rgu and here so beyond slightly beyond the tip of the penis the dye is injected and then it is going so this is the stricture portion okay so the stricture can be diagnosed by this retro ascending urethrogram now coming to the uh, another investigations okay uh, we use radioactive isotopes different radioactive isotopes so this these can diagnose anatomical abnormalities or functional abnormalities we have different substances dmsa and ddpa can anyone tell me how to remember uh, madam which one for anatomical abnormalities which one for functional abnormalities we were taught a mnemonic okay ms okay s stands for structural structural means anatomical problems can be diagnosed by dms scan p p stands for functional okay so the functional abnormalities of the kidney can be diagnosed by dtpa scan this is dimercaptosuccinic acid scan and diethylene triamine 
pentaastic acids can so dtpa can diagnose the functional abnormalities of the urinary tract whereas dmsa can detect the anatomical or structural abnormalities okay structural abnormalities so this is the dmsa scan okay this is normal dmsa you can see the both the kidneys okay this is the ddpa so i will not go into much details okay so it is taken from actually the behind okay i'll be telling you in details when we come to the uh, clearance okay different uh, structural abnormalities of the kidney i'm just giving you the uh, basic idea so as to how so this is from the behind okay if you see the scan so we are seeing so now this becomes i'm sorry so this becomes the right side of the patient this becomes the left okay so here the dtps scan showing the retention of isotope in the left kidney the right kidney has cleared off well so there is some problem with the left kidney so the functional abnormalities so you have to corroborate that with the another parameters like a urinary examination and then what is the creatinine creatinine clearance everything and the history of the patient with that you have to collaborate different uh, clinical investigations and then you have to arrive at the diagnosis okay there are many other investigations like ultrasound kub so this is one of the most common left and right used ultrasound kub okay then ct kub plain or contrast so this is the investigation of choice nowadays and then you can arrive at the proper diagnosis the many structural abnormalities the calculi then any dilatation everything can be made out from this ct kb even the renal tumors cortical cysts everything can be diagnosed by the ct kub so very simple ultrasound so this is showing hydronephrosis you can even see the cortico medullary differentiation and you are able to see the dilated calices okay simple ultrasound can give you the picture of the hydronephrosis whereas the ct kub can show where exactly is the problem at what level what is the size of the calculus if you use contrast it will also show the extent of obstruction also okay so this is the case of calculus so if you take a sagittal the the longitudinal view the coronal view what can you make out in this ct scan can you just guess em anipistundandi i don't know for something i am seeing ureteric ureteric calculus ah okay so it is a proximal ureteric calculus okay it will also give you the size of the calculus so depending on the size location and then the extent of hydronephrosis your treatment differs for different calculus suppose if it were to be here so it is mid it will become mid ureteric calculus if it is beyond and it is if it is at the vu junction then the treatment changes so the size the extent everything can be determined the exact level can be determined with the help of ct what is the advantage of ct scan just try to guess is it invasive or non invasive so definitely it is non invasive investigation and it will give details and any other associated pathologies can also be picked up okay now coming to cystoscopy so it can be used either as diagnostic tool or even for therapeutic methods suppose you find some tumor or something you can take biopsy if you see small calculus you can retrieve it back and then you can examine the urinary bladder the trigone and then the ureteric orifices you can see you can see even the ureterocele if it is there or is there any inflammation any stenosis any bladder tumors any bladder mass any uh, any uh, any any problem you can directly visualize and you can also take some biopsy bits or even you can do for go for a therapeutic 
procedure also okay and look for any bladder fistulas can be ruled out and then biopsy can be taken and then posterior urethral valves if they are present you can fulgurate you can burn the valves by this cystoscopy okay so it becomes a pakka therapeutic procedure then definitely for turp you have to first do cystoscopy and then start uh, scooping out the prostate and also for the urethrotomy for any strictures or anything you can directly use as a uh, therapeutic tube tool so what is the usual position of the patient patient usually kept in lithotomy position the mild sedation can be given or it can also be done under general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia or short general depending on the duration and nature of the procedure so advantage is direct visualization and any therapeutic procedure can be undertaken so this is a beautiful tumor in the bladder so you can take biopsy or even you can go for therapeutic excision also but it depends on the tumor uh, the histopathological correlation okay these are the multiple calculi in the urinary bladder just we are almost at the end of the class a 35 year old male presented with pain in the loin radiating to the groin and he presents to the emergency room at 2 am at a tertiary center please go through each and every word the investigation of choice is at 2 am he has come but he has luckily come to tertiary center okay a probably young male groin to loin pain what does it signify groin to loin pain just guess so it could be ureter calicle okay yes the ureteric calculus okay uh, but he has come to a tertiary center as uh, a uh, proper high five helical ct helical yes. ct okay. or yes helical ct is the answer ideally you can do ultrasound abdomen had that uh, see ultrasound abdomen sometimes the ureteric calculi can be missed very easily okay whereas if you take helical ct helical ct does not even miss a single segment in the ureter like a spring our spring will be there no so it will go in a helical manner and it will it will not miss any segment in the linear ureter okay so you can pick up calculus at any stage okay so you, the investigation of choice usually at a tertiary center is helical ct you can also take x ray kub or uh, ivu also but he has presented at 2 am okay so you don't have much time for serum creatinine so still you are waiting for the reports so meanwhile you can directly take the patient for helical ct of course after resuscitating the patient if the patient is severely dehydrated and rolling with pain you can't take him for the diagnosis give him some analgesia and then take him for helical ct so it is probably a ureteric calculus the investigation of choice is ct because you are at a tertiary center after a single episode of gross hematuria in a young boy okay the intravenous urography shows 1.5 cm filling defect in the lower renal infundibulum the next investigation is so just try to guess what is the diagnosis why is not now can you can you doctors now yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am so what could be the probable diagnosis in a young boy so 1.5 cm filling defect in the lower renal infundibulum is probably it could be a calculus okay so we can do a cystoscopy in the renal, that's why i'm telling renal infundibulum not in the uh, urinary bladder region so it is very high up the next thing us gym us gym yes definitely why not cystoscopy means it is present higher up why not urine cytology means yes urine cytology you can go, do it for any person okay but that is not the next investigation the urine cytology would have been done even earlier also because any phc also it will send for urine examination rgu why it is not retrograde because the pathology is not in the lower side lower urinary tract it is in the higher so ideally ct ichunde definitely we would have gone for ct scan but here the investigation the next best option is 
USG. So you have to choose the best option from the given ones. So ultrasound will be the investigation of choice. So probably it could be the renal calculus. The best would be CT. Since CT is not among the options, I'm going for the USG. Okay. So from this class, what you can uh, gain or lose is, one is, it is the most common, uh, the image-based questions usually will be from the urology. Which investigation for which condition, definitely once we progress into the urology topics, we can guess, but I've given you the slight introduction. It is a very almost, if the urology is 100%, today's class constitutes about 3%, that's it, okay? You have been introduced like how an investigation is done and which one is preferable in which condition approximately. If it is a renal condition or a, a PUJ condition or if it is uretric in an emergency, in an elective. So what can you gain from each investigation? What are its limitations? So you have got a slight knowledge which can improve by further topics, okay? Further discussion of the topics. If you've got any queries, please ask me now so that we can conclude. If you don't have any queries, we can wind up. Manjunath and Sukanya. Yes, any queries, doctors? No, ma'am, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you very much. No, ma'am, thank you, ma'am. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Pulkesh, you can uh, stop the recording. Pulkesh, or a recording stop, Madi. Yes, madam. Nanmartin, madam. Close, Madi. Okay. Thank you. 